समस्त जन कल्याणे निरतम करुणामय नमामि चिन्मय देव सद्गुरु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओ शांति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुभ्यो नम हरि ओ हरि ओम and welcome to one and all what a lovely day it was yesterday we are celebrating guru dev's 105th birthday and what a lovely day it is today because it is the mothers day i wish all the mothers of the world a very happy mothers day in shastra mothers are very very special and especially in the taitri upanishad it has mothers have been given the status of god really it says matru devo bhava pitru devo bhava acharya devo bhava atithi devo bhava swadhyaya pravachanabhyam na pramaditavyam in short what it means is mother let your mother be a god unto you what a beautiful thought up till now in vedanta nyan yagna we have covered a lot of topics but let us today be absolutely clear of the perspective that vedanta may i correct my statement advaita vedanta speaks what it speaks it says that brahman alone is the truth and rest everything is mithya it also says that jivo brahmai vana apara that the jiva and the brahm is one and not different now if we focus on these two statements these are very very powerful statements what do they indicate they indicate two things number 1 it does acknowledge in both the statements that the jiva is there and the jagat is also second it does acknowledge that in spite of having the jiva and the jagat there is brahman now this point of view when we see that the shastra the vedas the upanishads are speaking that there is a jiva and there is a jagat and there is a brahman so somebody says hello this is no more monism this is dualism it is not advaita monism but it is dvaita which is dualism and this is where we have to be very very certain and sure about what we are studying these are different point of views if i quickly jog your memory to last session and the session before that what did we say that there are three types of experiences that we go through first experience is that experience where we are in a dream state where everything is like magic anything that you have in your mind kalpana can happen you can fly like a superman you can jump like hanuman from here to lanka because there you are experiencing it therefore advaita vedanta does not discount it for being false because you are experiencing it so what if it is only your experience but you are experiencing it therefore vedanta gives it a relative reality a degree of reality the second that we spoke about is this experience that we all are going through together together you are seeing me i am seeing you all together we are seeing the world together we are seeing the trees the sun coming every morning going every night the night coming up the stars twinkling and then going in the morning this is experienced by one and all that means this is a longer period of experience but does the experience remain the same no it changes therefore this 
reality the empirical reality vyavaharika satya the empirical what is the meaning of empirical as we said that which can cannot be qualified by facts it can only be said yeah i can experience it i can feel it i can touch it i can taste it but factual by arguments by neti neti by that technique by which we can remove which is false and what remains behind remains the truth by that technique you can't qualify this vyavaharika satya and then we also spoke of that truth which remains the same in and through all the states the dream state as well as your waking state and the third state of awareness which we all go through which is called the deep sleep state or a state where we are unaware of not only the body but even the mind is not there consciousness is there this distinction that truth that consciousness which is awareness is in the waking state of course is in the dream state otherwise how would the mind see those dreams and even in the deep sleep state where nothing is cognized still when you wake up and you feel yes i am something that is the paramartika satya which vedanta advaita vedanta is pointing out to us again and again that this is what we are in search of we are seeking this truth this is the only truth that we are following and we are wanting to reach there should not be any confusion then one would say oh so if you are only focused on knowing that reality which is supposedly absolutely nirguna what is nirguna nirguna means without attributes which is nirvishesha vishesha visheshan without adjectives that which cannot be touched cannot be smelled cannot be tasted it cannot be felt then how do you pray to gurudev or how do you pray to ramakrishna and everyone how is it not duality and this is the time your mind has to be absolutely crystally clear what it is vedanta never said that the paramarthika satya the vyavaharika satya and the pratibhasika satya the dream state the waking state and the absolute state are one and the same reality level one has to understand this very very clearly that they are having relative reality relatively real not absolutely real meaning meaning what i'll quickly give you an example gurudev spoke about this example yesterday that if ram wants to visit the house of sham and i am a person standing and knowing where sham's residence is and ram comes and asks ari jagdish do you know the residence of sham i would say yes i know watch this that particular tree that you see on that tree watch the tree directly opposite to that tree there is that house on top which there is a crow that building that house where the crow is sitting in front of the tree is sham's house what do we understand by this example that tomorrow when ram comes he should not search just the tree he should not look at a house which is got a crow he should be very clear where sham lives all the shastras all the scriptures all the masters can only point in the direction where that truth is what that truth is it is us who have to gain that direction and after gaining the direction we have to move in that direction followed path 
and then uncover discover or rather once again realize your own true self because this is not searching of something outside it is seeking which is inside a very quick example once again when i am searching something in this room but i don't know what i am searching can i ever find it no i will search everything i'll remove all the cushions i'll remove all the books i'll remove gurudev's photo i'll remove the flowers everything but i have no clue of what am i searching can i ever find that no but the moment i know what am i seeking then i can go and seek that out from this room if i am confident that i have lost my key in this room i will search it i will find it and therefore it is necessary to know what you are seeking at the first and foremost place that's what advaita vedanta wants to make it very clear that the perspective has to be clear you should know what we are seeking once your seeking is complete then you can search and find isn't it and therefore the different body parts we were speaking last time that this body is called annamaya kosha that inside is called manomaya kosha that is called vijnanamaya kosha and where there is nothing no feeling no feeling of anything is called anandamaya kosha but which is pure ignorance now that we have made it clear that our seeking is only to search the reality and nothing else from next class onwards we are going to straight move on head on into the search of reality i pray to bhagwan i pray to gurudev i pray to every single mahatma the great souls who have walked this path to bless us to bless us all on the path that we are going to take together with this few words i take a madhya viram today and next sunday be prepared be ready we are embarking a new journey om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hi हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम हरि ओम तुम नम